Hi, this is Mark from Wiki Design. In this spline tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can make a camera follow a path around an object in your scene like this. Now, this can be really helpful if you need to make sure your camera path is really smooth and professional looking. And in this case, you can see it kind of eases in and then it will infinitely loop right here. So kind of just keep going around this pizza basically forever. So let's just jump into spline and show you how easy it is to set up. And here we are inside of spline and I already have my pizza model imported. I just have like a really simple uh, ground cover right here. Uh, can we just take a moment and appreciate how nice this pizza looks right here? So if you look right here, this is a nice looking 3D pizza. When I downloaded this, I was really impressed by how good this is. So I'll leave a link to this creator below. I got this from Sketchfab. And if you want to learn how to import 3D models inside of spline, I'll leave a card up here because I just made a video on how to import uh, Sketchfab models into Spline. So I'll leave a link in the description as well. The first thing we need to do is, in this case, I wanted to just have a circle go around the pizza. So we just need to add a circle or an eclipse to go around. And then we just need to assign a camera to go around that. So to keep this easy, let me go ahead and just click this eyeball button right here in the layers. This is going to hide the ground. This will make it a little bit easier to manage. Next, we're gonna click the uh, plus button up here. We're gonna to go to Eclipse. And then what you can do is just click right here in the middle of your object. So I always like to make sure I'm always working in the zero, zero coordinates. So I always make sure my models are at the absolute position of like zero, zero. So in this case, I'm just gonna add it right there. And if you look right here on the right, let me just go ahead and make sure that's at zero, zero, and zero. Next, what I'm going to do is just scale up this eclipse. So I hit click this lock button in the scale, and I'm just going to click and drag to about the width I would need. So you can always make these edits later if you need to be able to move stuff around. So that right there is right in the middle. So let me actually move my pizza over a little bit because my pizza looks like it might not be in the center. So that right around there is uh, pretty good. So the pizza is pretty centered now. Now what we need to do is, instead of having this filled like this, we need to convert this to a path. So I have my Eclipse uh, highlighted right here, and let me actually just call this Path, just so we can stay organized. And then you just click this button right here, it says Convert to Path. Once you do that, uh, in some cases it might blow up like this, but we're going to go ahead and make it a lot smaller. So underneath Size, uh, it's like at 50. So let's just go ahead and maybe try like 6. Even that's a little bit wide. So let's try like two. So depending on how big your eclipse is and your model, you might have a different size. But I just wanted to have this as like a visual reference so we know what the camera is going to be attached to. And then at the end, we're going to actually just hide this. So it doesn't really matter. So let's go ahead and change the camera view. And you're going to see this is how the path is set up right here. So this is exactly how I wanted it to be. Next, we're going to add the camera to the scene. And then we're actually going to assign it to this path right now. So what I like to do is always go back into the top view. So I like to click on here, click on the plus, and then scroll down until you see camera. It's usually toward the bottom. So once you click on camera, it's going to add your camera somewhere around here. So you can always go right here, and you can see where it's at. So if you zoom out, this is your camera right now. And what I like about Spline is they give you like a little preview of how it looks you know, in the camera view down here when you select it. So as of right now, it's sitting way above the pizza. That doesn't really matter right now because we're going to change all of this in a minute. So in order for this to work, what we need to do is actually add a group and then have the camera inside that group. So there's a few times where inside of Spline, you need to add stuff into groups in order for certain functionality to work. So I figured out that this is the same thing when you need to assign a camera to a path. You need to make sure it's in a group. And all you have to do is in the layers over here, just right click on it and do a group selection. So you could just call this like a camera group or something, just something that you know. So the only thing inside of that group is just your camera. Now what we need to do is select the group and then go over here to the right where it says align to path, select object, and then select the uh, eclipse, or in this case, I just called it path. And when you do that, you're gonna see the camera is automatically assigned to this path. And as you can see here on the right, they have a few different options. Your orientation, you can choose between world and tangential. Uh, the difference is, if you watch right here, if we click on world, what this does is it makes it where your access points are kind of like frozen. 
So let me go ahead and just show you what I mean. You see how it's like always facing down? So the camera, this cone right here is the field of view and where it's gonna be displayed. Now, if we switch this over to tangential, you're gonna notice that it follows it correctly. So you can see that it's not always kind of frozen. So we'll get more into that. Um, but what you're gonna to wanna to do is just make sure you have this enabled right here like this. And as you, as you might've noticed, I'm using this slide right here. So what this is gonna do is basically it goes from zero to one. So I like to consider that zero to like 100%. So 100% or 360, however you wanna look at it, it's a complete uh, circle all the way from the beginning to the end. And now what we can do is let's go ahead and rotate the camera and have it where it's actually facing the pizza. In order to do that, what you're gonna to wanna to do is make sure you select the correct layer so you can see right here, camera. Then what you can do is you can either manually change it right here. Um, so let me go ahead and just zero that out. So let me go to zero. So now you can see if I play this, so if I slide it, you always have to go back to the group. If I slide it, you're gonna see that the camera is following the path just like that let me go into that camera view and actually show you what that means and if we just go back here into the slide you can see it's following that path right here it's almost like a roller coaster it's going on the path correctly so what we want to do is rotate the camera so it's facing the pizza not the path right here so let me go back into my personal camera go up to the top and if you look right here if we select the camera again Let's zero everything out right here. And now what we can do is do your rotate right here. So if we go, you can see when you do that, you can start to see the pizza in this little viewport down here. It's showing you that it's actually in viewport now. So we can go to something like negative 90. So now if we go into the camera view and we start to slide it, you can see it's always going to be negative 90 degrees on that Y axis. So that's what's pointing toward the pizza. So that's actually exactly what we want. So now what you can do is underneath your viewport, just click on camera and you can see this is right now, if you were to play this, it would be that close to the pie. So you might want to either expand your uh, path if you need to go out further, or you can always change right here uh, on the camera. You can change your FOV, your field of view. So you can make it where it's more zoomed in or you can zoom it out a little bit. So you got a few different options to kind of mess around with. I like to honestly just keep most of this by default in the camera uh, perspective and all of this stuff. I like to keep this default and then alter the path if you need to actually scale it or anything like that. So now let's go ahead and show you we need to actually probably increase the height of this path so it's floating above the pizza because right now you're just going to see like the bowl and maybe the crust. So what I like to do is just go back into your personal camera. Uh, what I've learned is make all of your adjustments right here in the viewport of like your personal camera, not at the camera level because sometimes the settings uh, can get saved and kind of out of whack. So now what we can do is select your path right here and just use your regular gizmo and move it up a little bit. So maybe something a little bit lower, maybe right around there. And you might have noticed that the camera is still kind of stuck at the old position. Um, it's just something within the viewport is not really stuck there. It will still go on to the, you know, your path as if it was raised. So uh, what you could do is a few different things. You could just kind of reset your orientation right here. I like to just hit escape. Go back into your camera right here. And you could just change it from like world, just click one of these buttons and it will snap back. So if we go back into the camera view, you could see right here, that's how the camera's looking. So it's not quite right. Let's go ahead and inside the viewport while you have the camera selected, let's just go ahead and rotate it here. So you could see, you could just rotate it here and something like in the center looks good right there. So now let's go into the camera and see that looks pretty good right there. And let's go ahead and now what we can do is assign the animation. So that's really easy to do. If you've already been using Spline, what we need to do is just create a few different states in an event. And you assign those to the camera group. So we need to go ahead into your camera group, select states, and we're just gonna do a base state and a regular state. So base state's gonna be when it starts here and a regular state or the future state's gonna be it animated all the way around. So all you have to do is click on state 
and where it says slide, just move that to a one. So now we're gonna go from a zero to a one on the slide right here. And then underneath your events, uh, you're just gonna go ahead and click on transition. Click here, we're gonna go right here. The number one is a base state, number two is state, and then this right here is how long it's gonna take. So something like a 20 seconds, I found was pretty good right here. And then this is how it's gonna transition into when it starts and ends. So by default, it's an ease in and out and they give you all these different settings, but I think that's pretty good. So it'll slowly like go up and then it will slowly like kind of come back in. So that's a nice transaction or a transition. Then underneath loop, um, I like to just do an infinite. If you're gonna do a circle like this, you probably just wanna have it infinite. And now underneath your export, you can go ahead and make sure that you're seeing it's going to be on your camera, not your personal camera. And that's it. So now when you hit play, it should animate around the pizza. So you can see right here, it's slowly animating around the pizza. I think I said, what, 20 seconds? So that's pretty good right there. And like I said, you're going to need to probably make uh, even more tweaks to it. So like in this situation, I want it to be up a little bit more. So let's go ahead and just move that up. And like I said, the camera looks like it's still locked in there, but you can just click on world and just bring it back here. And now it looks like it's a little bit higher up. And the last thing I'm going to cover is this offset right here um, underneath your align to path. So basically what offset's going to do is you can have the start and end point anywhere along your path. So by default, it's just starting right here because that's probably the start of the path itself. So if you want it to start like right around here, what you can do, I like to go to top view and let's go ahead into your base state and let's say you want to have the animation start where my cursor is and then have it loop all the way around. So what you can do is offset that by 0.25. So let me show you how that works. So if you select your camera group right here and you can just do your slides, so you can manually slide it right here, but I already know that that's a quarter. So that's just 0.25. So if you wanted to start over here, be 0.5 and then down here, be like 0.75 so they make you work in decimal points rather than like percentages which is fine and what you also need to do so that's at the base state you also need to go to the regular state and make sure that you start that at 0.25 so now if you hit play it's going to start here and then go all the way around and this is what it looks like when i rotate the camera and we're at the 0.25 offset so you can see that's a better alignment right there and the last thing i recommend is this right here, of course, this is your path. So you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and probably just hide that. So let me bring back the floor. And then where that path is, you can just click this eyeball and it's gonna remove that. So now when I play it, you're not gonna see any of that. You're gonna see it actually sitting on the table correctly. And that path is gonna be out of there. And that's it for the spline tutorial. Make sure you give this video a like, subscribe to this YouTube channel, and hit that bell to receive notifications when I release new tutorials like this. Again, this is Mark from Wiki Design.